With having the ideas of conditionals and biconditionals behind us, we're now going to look at how to use these in deductive reasoning. So let's begin with the definition. Deductive reasoning is the process of reasoning logically from given statements or facts to a conclusion. So if you're presented with information, you put all that information together and come up with a conclusion that is accurate, then that means you use deductive reasoning. Now, when we're using deduc deductive reasoning, we can only go off of the facts that are known or the information that is given. We cannot bring in outside sources or things that are not common to knowledge. Now, also in the process of deductive reasoning, we have two different laws that we're going to be looking at and pulling them apart and seeing how they can be used and common errors that occur when they are being used. So let's begin. The first of these two laws is called the law of detachment. Now, using our notation for conditionals and biconditionals, the law of detachment basically says that if you have the statement, if P then Q, and you know, sorry, and this is true, and you know that P is true, those work together to tell us Q is true also. And this works one way. If P then Q, and we know P is true, Q has to be true. A couple of examples to examine. First, if you trip on a chair in the dark, then you will fall. That is our conditional. And the fact that we know is that you did trip on a chair in the dark. The conclusion that can be reached from this is that you have fallen or you did fall. So our P statement held true, therefore the Q has to be true. There's no way around it. Let's take a look at another one. If a student got at least a 90% in my math class, then the student got an A. John got an A with 87%. So because the conclusion was reached, John got an A, but the precursor, the hypothesis, was not met, we cannot conclude anything definitively except John must not have been in my math class because the rules for my class are 90% is required for an A. So as you go through, make sure that it is the hypothesis that's being met in order to reach your conclusion, not that the conclusion was met and then assume that the hypothesis is true other characteristics or conditions might come into effect as you are going through the situation. For instance, here, enrollment in a different math class. So the law of detachment is one item we are looking at. The second law that we is the law of syllogism. Now, law of syllogism has a parallel in algebra to the transitive property. So the law of syllogism tells us that if P then Q is true and if Q then R is true it must hold true that if P then R. So we can skip over the middle step basically and come to a conclusion quicker by going around the intermediary part. So what would this look like in a series of descriptions? Let's take a look at one. So if a whole number ends in 0, then it's divisible by 10. If a number is divisible by 10, then it's divisible by 5. So our first P statement, number ends in 0, then we have it's divisible by 10. If a number is divisible by 10, carries over and gives us it is divisible by 5. So skipping the middle part, we say if a whole number ends in 0, then it is divisible by 5. We can skip the middle part and have a valid conclusion. Let's try another. If ray AB and ray AD are opposite rays, then they form a straight angle. If two rays are opposite rays, then they form a straight angle. So what can we work from this? Well, we have the statement AB and AD are opposite rays. Given this conclusion, they form a straight angle. Two rays are opposite rays, they form a straight angle. Because we don't have the linking piece 
here that a, b, and a, d are the opposite rays being spoken of, then we cannot conclude anything. So do not jump to conclusions that you do not know. You can use the combination of these ideas to gather specific conclusions. For instance, if you live in the city of Colorado Springs, then you live in El Paso County. If you live in El Paso County, then you live in the state of Colorado. So if you know that somebody lives in Colorado Springs, you can conclude that they live in Colorado. Using these ideas together will help us in our reasoning and proof that we're studying this unit. So make sure you have these two laws down and are ready to use them moving forward.